They were on their way to the new world when a rendezvous with an iceberg crushed all of their dreams and hopes. There was panic and tears and heartbreaking goodbyes, like that of Jack and Rose. Or was there? Let's see how well you know the real story of Titanic. The love story of Jack Dawson and Rose DeWitt Bukater was inspired by true events. What do you say? Is it a myth or a fact? The most emotional Titanic love story was actually all made up by the screenwriter and director of the famous movie, James Cameron. Some passengers featured in the movie were real though, and by a mere coincidence, there was a Jay Dawson on board. His name was Joseph, not Jack, and he worked as a coal trimmer. The most expensive object lost with the Titanic was a painting by Pablo Picasso. What's your take on this one? It's a myth, another one given to us by the famous movie. The most valuable item that went down with the Titanic was probably a Mary Joseph Blondell painting, created in 1814. Some other valuable items were a violin that belonged to Wallace Hartley, the musician who insisted that they had to play till the very last moment. There was also a 1912 Renault Type CB Coupe de Ville that would now cost millions of dollars, a handwritten manuscript by Joseph Conrad, first edition essays by Francis Bacon, five Steinway grand pianos, and, of course, some fine china plates and cups, and first-class passengers jewelry. The Titanic was the largest and the most luxurious passenger ship of its time. Does it sound real to you? Yep, it's totally true. In April 1912, the Titanic was the largest ship ever built. It was 882 feet long and had a maximum passenger capacity of 2,435 people. That's not a lot compared to the largest cruise ship of today, the Symphony of the Seas. It's just a bit longer than the Titanic, but has more than double the passenger numbers. And yes, no other cruise liner has probably beaten the Titanic in terms of luxury to this day. It costs more than $200 million to build in today's money. The tickets were also quite expensive. Duh! First-class tickets ranged in price from $1,700 in today's money for a berth up to $50,000 for one of the two parlor suites. Second-class tickets were $700. Third-class passengers had to pay between $170 to $460. Most of the passengers of the unsinkable ship managed to survive, true or false. Sadly, it's false. Only 37% of all the passengers actually survived the meeting with the Titanic. Around 61% of the first class passengers, 42% of the second class passengers, and 24% of the third-class passengers made it out alive. The Titanic was passing through the Bermuda Triangle when things went wrong, and that's probably why it sunk. What do you say, myth or reality? It's 100% a myth. The Titanic never even came close to the Bermuda Triangle. The liner sank about 400 miles south of Newfoundland, which is a huge distance to the north of Bermuda, the infamous area where ships and planes disappear without a trace. We might have the moon to blame for the sinking of the Titanic. True or false? This one is true. The moon heavily affects the tides on Earth. The closer the moon is to the Earth, the stronger the tides are because of the increasing gravity of our satellite. Back in 1912, the moon was so close it made several glaciers in Greenland break apart. Massive chunks of ice that broke off from the glaciers started floating south. The supermoon event came just six minutes after a spring tide, the alignment of the moon, the sun, and the Earth that makes their combined gravity reach its peak twice a month. 
And the day before, our planet had come the closest to the sun that year, which made the gravity even stronger. This mixture of events created perfect conditions for one of the most powerful tides in history. Icebergs breaking off from Greenland's glaciers drift off to the coastal waters of Labrador and Newfoundland, where they often run aground. To move on, they need to either melt and become lighter, or catch a high tide that would carry them further. The 1912's tide was as high as it gets. So, they shifted many shipping routes south because of the huge amount of icebergs. But not the Titanic, of course, as they believed it was unsinkable. It took 4 hours and 40 minutes for the Titanic to sink. What do you say? It's false, and if you're a Titanic expert, you definitely know it was actually 2 hours and 40 minutes. And this was slow enough, given the damage caused by the iceberg. It didn't sink faster, thanks to the ship's construction. There were 16 watertight compartments in the lower part of the ship. They worked as a lifeline. When the iceberg crashed into the hull, it broke into 6 boxes. The Titanic could have stayed afloat only if 4 compartments had been damaged. Water filled the first six compartments within one hour. During this time, the ship tilted slightly to the right side. Then, water began to flood the seventh box when all six boxes were filled. And from that moment, the sinking rate was growing with every second. The ship's bow sank under the water, and then the stern filled up. One of the leading reasons for the Titanic tragedy was signal rockets. True or false? What's your take on it? This one is true! When any ship sinks, the crew members must release red flares. It's a signal to all nearby ships that someone is in trouble. But for an unknown reason, someone put white lights in the Titanic's rocket box. When the ship crashed into an iceberg, the crew members released white flares. Another ship, SS Californian, was nearby at the time. Its captain knew the Titanic was going through a dangerous iceberg area. The crew of this ship didn't see the Titanic in the dark, but they noticed white rockets. Radio communication between the vessels didn't work. The SS Californian operator turned off the receiver. The Californian captain felt that something was wrong, so he sent a Morse lamp signal to the Titanic. But it was too late. The ship was already underwater, so no one could respond. Another ship, Samson, was sailing alongside the Titanic. It drifted with lights off, since it was catching seals, and that's not legal. When the captain saw the Titanic's white rockets, he thought it was the Coast Guard. So Samson sailed away as fast as they could. They realized they had abandoned the drowning passengers once they made it to Iceland, and learned the horrible news. In 1996, one expedition managed to raise the Titanic from the ocean floor. Do you believe it? If you don't, you're right. There were different ideas on how to raise the Titanic, from doing it with compressed air, to putting it in wire mesh and covering it with liquid nitrogen, or using giant magnets. The only real attempt to raise the Titanic was made in 1996, and it failed dramatically. The expedition's goal was to lift a part of its hull, weighing about 21 tons. It would still have been the largest piece to see the sunlight again, if the operation had succeeded, that is. They lowered four large bags filled with diesel fuel to the bottom of the ocean and attached them to the hull plate. Then, the fuel bags were released and they started lifting the pieces on their own. The plate was about 200 feet below the surface when the weather got rough. The expedition members decided to tow the part to calmer waters around 80 miles away. Long before they reached the towing destination, half of the plate broke off and sank to the bottom again. Two of the lifting bags seemed to have broken loose, and the hull went down. The Titanic will most likely crumble to dust halfway up if someone tries lifting it again. So, how many correct answers do you have? Let me know in the comments below! That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.